Letters from Spain. Letter one. The beginning. I am here to talk about Spain, but I should begin with some reservations. Talking about other cultures is a dangerous enterprise. A major risk is exoticizing the culture, making it seem altogether unusual and even nonsensical. From there, it is a short step to dismissing the culture completely, treating it as an illogical accident of humankind, a bizarro land where nothing is as it should be. On the other extreme, we may normalize the culture by focusing exclusively. On the ways in which it is not so very different. This way, we treat the other culture as we treat ourselves, which is partly good. However, this method can fail to recognize how a culture is genuinely special, and this is only the beginning of our troubles. To talk about something, we must ourselves have a point of view. And that point of view is formed, of course, by our own culture. For me, that culture is American, specifically from New York, specifically from Westchester County, north of the city, specifically from the town of Sleepy Hollow, of Halloween fame. For me, that is normal, and this sense of normality shapes my perspective. I cannot help but compare Spain to this culture, my culture, and to see everything Spanish as, in a sense, a deviation. Is it possible to talk about a culture in purely objective terms? I doubt it. And even if it were possible, I doubt that it would be worth listening to. Culture is, among other things, a system of values. And you cannot understand it without having values of your own. I'm going on listing difficulties, and yet there are still more risks to talk about. An obvious one is the use of stereotypes. Now, what is a stereotype? It is not merely a generalization, but a widely known and popularly believed generalization, usually with positive or negative ramifications. Each country has its share of stereotypes. The Spanish dance flamenco, go to bullfights and sleep siestas, while Americans eat hamburgers and live in big houses, and so on. Now, some people say that stereotypes are problematic because they are generalizations. I don't think that's true. All knowledge consists of generalizations, and some generalizations are perfectly true and valid. It is true, for example. That Spanish people tend to eat dinner later than Americans. The problem with stereotypes then is not that they are generalizations, but that they are misapplied or untrue generalizations. Most Spanish people don't like flamenco, they don't go to bullfights, and they don't have time in the middle of the day for a nap. And besides, these stereotypes are troublesome because they project a kind of fantasy version of Spain or America or what have you. In the case of Spain, this fantasy version has people living passionate, dangerous lives under the scorching Mediterranean sun. And now, don't get me wrong; these things do exist in Spain, and there are interesting facets of Spanish culture. But to characterize the whole country. As a land of bullfights and flamenco is highly inaccurate, to say the least. So, considering all of these risks, then what am I here to do? In this podcast, I hope to use my own experience in Spain to consider some of the subtler differences between life here and life back in the United States. To tell you something about myself, my name is Roy. I'm 28 years old. I teach English, and I live in Madrid. I moved here about four years ago, when I was working in Manhattan in an office job that, shall we say, did not fulfill my dreams of post-college life. 
I wanted an escape to see the wider world, to go on an adventure. And Europe seemed to be the answer. I'd been reading about European history for years. In undergrad, I studied cultural anthropology, and my advisor did his research in the south of Spain. Dreams of castles and philosophers' graves beguiled me, and soon I found myself on a plane to Madrid. You may ask, why Spain? And to tell the truth, the answer is not very inspiring. Simply, Spain is one of the easiest countries to legally work in for Americans. It was an entirely opportunistic move. But it was a fortunate one, since I became enamored of the country within months. My backstory explains my own bias. Like many people, I suspect, I came to Spain seeking an escape from the dreary world of American adulthood, and I found an escape. Thus, for me, Spain is tinged with a kind of rosy hue, as a place of refuge and adventure. I have lived here long enough for some of this to have worn off. But still, I am predisposed to see all things Spanish as good. Still, I do hope I will avoid idealizing this country, since such a romanticized image would have little value. So in this podcast, I wish to explain what I have come to learn and appreciate about this place and why I have chosen to stay year after year. And I will do this from an inescapably American perspective. The differences between Spanish and American culture go far beyond flamenco and siestas. And I think these subtler differences have much to teach us. I hope to do this without either collapsing the differences between these two cultures and without making Spain seem impossibly exotic. So let us see whether I can thread the needle. Thank you.